Happy Christmas! It's uh, good to be worshipping the Lord on this, the day that we celebrate his birth. Um, you're with New Milton Evangelical Tree Church as we do that. And uh, first of all, I want to thank all those who have taken part in the service. There's quite a few that have contributed um, over the, today's service. So uh, we trust that you know uh, the encouragement of that, but also the blessing of the Lord as we worship together. Um, so let's, uh, let's begin with a time of prayer. Let's pray. Our loving Father, as we come to you this morning, we thank you and praise you for your grace. We thank you that your grace has been shown to us in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the way that he came and willingly uh, sought to uh, live the lives that we live, yet was near to do it without sin. So we praise you for the grace that you've displayed to us in your Son. And we ask, Lord, that as we worship you today, that we might be those that um, not just to worship you this day, but worship you all the days of our lives. Lord, that we would make you the first priority in everything that we do, not just Christmas, but Lord, for uh, all of time. We pray for this and we ask it for Jesus' sake. Amen. So we're going to start with singing Good Christian Men Rejoice and we're going to lift our voices high and praise the Lord for his goodness to us. So we have the kids taking part this morning. We have a, something a little bit different. They're going to tell us the Christmas story. So over to the youngsters to do that for us. Oh, hello, children. I have a few words to share with you. I read them down somewhere. Oh, yes. Sometimes the government can make us do things that we don't want to do. Like staying inside for months, not being able to see our friends and family. And that's where our story starts. Not last year, or the year before, but much longer ago, thousands of years ago, in fact. With one couple getting being told that the government has plans for them. I can't believe this, Mary. What is it? Caesar Augustus has decided that he needs to count everyone in the Roman world. What's so bad about that? Seems easy enough to me. It means that we have to go to all the way to Bethlehem to be counted. But I can't, I'm pregnant. I'm afraid you're going to have to, Mary. Come on, I'll go stand up the donkey. And sometimes things seem to go from bad to even worse, from tier one to tier four. I can't believe none of the other inns in this town had any room for us, Joseph. Me neither, Mary. But at least we've got this stable. It's better than being out in the cold. True. And we've got some lucky neighbours. Yeah. Oh. Ah, Joseph! What's wrong, Mary? I think I'm about to have the baby. Oh no, what are we going to do? And so it came to be that baby Jesus, God's precious son, was born. Leaving glory behind, God the Son came down to earth as a tiny baby. At the same time nearby, something much more boring was happening. Well, it seemed boring at first. 
One, two, three, four. What are you doing? I'm counting sheep. Oh, stop it. It's really annoying. Wait, can you hear that? <laughs> Do not be afraid. I bring good news that will cause great joy to all people. Today, the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. That's amazing. We've got to go and see this baby. It must be really important that the angels sing songs about him. So the shepherds went off to find the baby, and after seeing him, went and told everybody they could find all about the amazing things they had seen. Yep, here it is. And while some people were told about Jesus by angels, others had been waiting for him for a long time and had high expectations of what was about to come. Where are we going? We're following that star over there, the big one. Why do we need to follow the star? Because God has promised us a baby, the king of the Jews, and the star is a sign for where he is. Why do we need to see the baby? Because we want to worship him. This baby is the most important baby to ever have been born. Well, we better get going then. We wouldn't want to miss his birthday party. And so the other visitors made Jesus received were wise men bringing gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Wise men that knew that Jesus was the most important baby ever to be born. And so despite how bad the situation seemed at the beginning, God was always in control of it. And his plan was the most amazing Christmas gift anyone could ask for. I could go to the shelfie. Now, wasn't that good? Um, it was good to see the kids taking part, wasn't it? And so we're now going to sing Once in Royal David's City, and we're going to be led by St. Helen's Bishop Gate in that.
So we're going to have the Bible read to us now. We're going to be read uh, the Luke passage, and that's going to be read by Mary, and we're going to follow that by the uh, time of prayer from Martin and Annette. Oh, and then after that, just as an added treat this year, we're going to have Grace as she uh, gives us one of her poems. This passage is from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary touched up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you this Christmas morning with praise to you in our hearts and we remember the words of the angel all those years ago I bring you good news of great joy which will be for all the people today a saviour is born he is Christ the Lord and we thank you that that good news is good news for us today as well and father we remember that Christmas is the time when you sent your son into this world that Jesus came from heaven and he was born a baby and he grew to be a man and ultimately to die and to deal with our sin on a cross so father we thank you that we have much to praise you for this Christmas when many things are different father help us to really think on the true message of Christmas father many of us are uh, separated from our families and, and our friends but father we do thank you that mo modern technology means we can actually connect with each other but father we just pray that at this time when christmas is perhaps quieter and simpler that we would think on the true meaning of christmas uh, view coming into this world so father god we just pray um, that you would be with us this morning as we listen to the message we pray that we would hear something fresh from the christmas story and we pray most of all for those that do not know you as this time of great uncertainty when so many are fearful for their health for their lives are concerned and anxious regarding their livelihoods and the economy we father we just pray that they would look beyond the gifts that we um, give and receive beyond beyond the food the tinsel the tree and they, they would look to the true meaning of Christmas that they would realize that their need of the Lord Jesus Christ the greatest gift of all and receive him and would know the salvation that the Lord Jesus brings and would know true peace and true joy because they're trusting in you and we pray all these things in Jesus precious name amen amen and Heavenly Father we're just mindful that before that first Christmas um, many uh, prophesied that uh, you would come 
and many were looking forward to your coming. And Isaiah wrote these words. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And Lord, as we consider this past year coming up to this Christmas Day, um, we know that many people have been challenged uh, in both uh, mind, body and spirit um, and have had many things that have, have really challenged them as to where they perhaps stand before you. And as we think of this Christmas Day, for many, this past year has not been one looking forward to Christmas. It's been a year that has perhaps been no different to many people, those that have lived on the streets, those that have struggled with mental health and with um, uh, physical problems for many years. For them, perhaps this year has not been much different. The, the isolation and the loneliness, um, We've all experienced an element of that, but for many people it's been no different. And yet we just thank you, Lord Jesus, that uh, in all of the, the changing aspects of this year, you are the same yesterday, today and forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just thank you for that, Lord. And uh, as we consider uh, today, uh, the day that uh, you came to us, that first Christmas all those years ago, we pray that perhaps those that are, are watching along with us this morning will be thinking to themselves, what does Christmas really mean to me? That they might be for the first time uh, considering you, uh, the, the giver of eternal life, that they might be asking you into their life, that they might be able to say, uh, more words of scripture that father god i wonder how i managed to exist without the knowledge of your parenthood and your loving care but now i am a child i'm adopted in your family and i can never be alone because father god you're there beside me and as we consider this this christmas morning um, all the blessings that we've had uh, despite this past year and going on into 2021 lord we just pray that many will be uh, experience you as their Lord and Saviour for the first time and that next year will not be just a year where Covid is defeated but a year where their uh, old life is defeated and they have a new life in you and a new hope in the Lord Jesus. So again Lord we just thank you for your goodness to us and just pray for your blessing on us throughout this Christmas day uh, and uh, our time together with loved ones on, on no doubt on Zoom or, or FaceTime time uh, but most of all we just pray that we can spend time with you and so we ask these things in Jesus precious name amen the greatest gift by Grace Thomas Christmas is drawing closer the excitement starts to grow the wishful thinking has begun of presents Santa snow the Christmas trees put up the fairy lights brought down the hurried Christmas shoppers make visits into town the Christmas day soon passes, the decorations packed away, the nativity quickly forgotten until the next Christmas day. The story of the nativity is a story we often hear, the story of the baby Jesus that we listen to every year. But you may not know the reason behind this little boy, his real meaning and purpose to bring everyone so much joy. This baby is so special, but many don't know why. For he was a baby sent by God, just so he could die. But his death was not ordinary, for through it God saved lives. The lives of little children, mothers, husbands and wives. This death was to save everyone, to save them from their sin. To save them from eternal hell, so that they can be his kin. His undying unfailing love is what made him die for you. He endured the pain and the anguish so that you will never have to. This may sound far-fetched or even too good to be true, but Jesus bled and died because of his love for you. So before you declare this rubbish and throw it in the bin, just please take a moment to think about all your sin. All the wrong things you've done, Jesus doesn't care. He will take them all away if you ask him to in prayer. As Christmas draws ever closer, then remember this I ask, that the gift that Jesus gives you is the only one that will last. 
So thank you all, and uh, we're now going to sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. people's spirits might be lifted. Well, I would suggest that the reality is, however, that these things are just simply bolt-on to Christmas. They're simply bolt-on additions to the one thing that gives Christmas its real meaning, its real uh, centre of its joy, as it were. Uh, and that thing is, or that person is, uh, Jesus himself. Jesus is the reason for the season, we say. Um, And what I would suggest this morning as we think about this is that there is no joy without Jesus. There is no joy without Jesus. Now, don't mishear me. I am not saying that you cannot have fun or or a laugh over the Christmas period uh, unless 
um, you make much of Jesus. I'm not saying that. There are millions of people who do just that through the Christmas period, but their joy, let me suggest, is only skin deep. It is, it is surface level joy. Rather, I am saying that joy and many of the things that we uh, take for granted in our lives today, many of the things that we enjoy in the society that we're in, would be impossible without Jesus. Now, that's a, a big claim, isn't it? Well, let's think about when he came. Think about his birth. Um, darkness dominates without Christ. That's the reality of the situation. Darkness dominates without Christ. Now, when Jesus came into the world, it was dark. Uh, particularly for Israel. Israel was in a particularly bad place, but also in the rest of the world there was much darkness um, around us. Much of the world was subject to the darkness and superstition. It was the problems of society that really just uh, framed everything. Much of the world had been conquered uh, at the end of a sword, so Rome had had a lot to do with that. Um, oppression and war was the picture that is in that time when Jesus comes on the face of the earth. Now Jesus came as the light to dispel that darkness. And we have that recorded in various different places in Scripture, don't we? So John chapter 1 and verses 9 to 11, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. It was so dark that even his own people did not want to recognize him. Such was the difficulty, such was the... Um, a dark a spiritual darkness that was in the world at that time. And then Isaiah 9 2, doesn't it? It tells us, as uh, uh, this is quoted later in Jesus' life, thinking about his ministry beginning. The people in walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. So here we have Jesus coming into a world that is full of darkness. Now, the darkness then was not simply the situations of men's lives, you know, so the fact that they were held um, uh, at uh, a sword point or, or the fact that uh, things were very superstitious in those days. No, that wasn't just the darkness. It was the darkness of their own hearts. It was the darkness of their own problems and uh, their own uh, selfishness that was a, a major issue in their lives. Now we see it in the way, don't we, um, in the way that uh, Jesus has been pushed from society's minds. See, even in our days, there is darkness there. Uh, lawmaker, Jesus has been pushed far, further and further from lawmakers' uh, concerns and from even MPs' thinking. Uh, really, Jesus is being pushed further and further out of our society at the moment. And so that darkness is coming back. That darkness is beginning to envelop us again. Well, Jesus came into the world that was hurting uh, that was in a mess, um, and he came to be the means to fix this world. He came to be the one to set this world right. He came to fix that which was broken. Uh, and so we begin to see how Jesus comes as the light of the world to fix our darkness problem. Now, when you have something that is broken, when you have something that has gone wrong, you want a repairman, don't you? As uh, uh, as many of you, I'm sure, can imagine in our house, if the uh, washing machine goes wrong, well, it's, it's panic stations, really. If the washing machine breaks, um, the day that the man who's due to come and fix it comes is a day of great joy within uh, the household, and it's particularly with Liz, I have to say, um, because she is aware of all of the problems that are building up and becoming more and more uh, of an issue. So the, the man who comes to repair it is received with great glee. Suddenly the worries and the concerns and all of those things are gone um, in terms of the washing machine. Well, without Jesus, the world continues to get worse and worse. So if Jesus isn't part of our life, if Jesus isn't the thing that we are celebrating over this Christmas period, uh, then we begin to look around at our society and see the darkness that creeps in, the darkness that creeps even into our lives. But with Jesus, this world is in the repair shop, as it were. It is uh, with the repairman, and he has a plan to fix it and to make it all good. Uh, better than that, you know, when you have a service plan or you have somebody out to fix something, it comes with a cost, doesn't it? Well, here is the beautiful thing. Here is the wonderful thing. As we think about Christmas, as Jesus comes as the light of the world, uh, he is the one who uh, has not just come to repair it, but he has paid the price. He is the one who has come to pay the price that is necessary that we might be fixed, that we might know God working and transforming our darkness to light. Uh, Jesus himself said, I am the light of the world. 
Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So grasping a hold of Jesus and who he is uh, around this time of year is an important thing that we should get in our minds. Uh, why do we celebrate at this time of year? We celebrate because uh, Jesus, um, the great repair man, as it were, has come to fix our darkness problem. Second thing is there would be no joy without the good news. Uh, so there's no joy without Jesus. If he had not come as a baby, as a child in a manger, had not gone all the way to the cross and died on that place, then there really would uh, be a problem for us. But there is no joy without the good news. Now, Christmas is the time of year that we celebrate the coming of Jesus, the uh, coming of Jesus Christ, the coming of God as man. Now, that's just mind-blowing when you stop to think about that. Getting your head around that can be quite an interesting task. But we all know that uh, probably Jesus was not born around this time. There was uh, plenty of evidence to suggest that he wasn't around this time. And we all know that Christmas, well, at least some parts of it anyway, um, were borrowed from pagan festivals. Well, uh, neither of those two things really matter. I will be honest, they have no particular relevance to us at all. Um, we celebrate this season because of the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ coming. We celebrate because um, we don't actually know when Jesus was born uh, specifically there are plenty of guesstimates but we don't actually know specifically uh, but what we do know is that it is worth celebrating what is worth celebrating is the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ and what matters is this news is worthy of celebration now God restricting himself from becoming a man and, and walking amongst us uh, to show us what life is like when we obey God the Father, when we do what is right in God's sight. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ is the only one who has ever been able to do that. And so we celebrate the coming of the one who shows us what God is like uh, and how uh, to live for him and to enjoy him in these days is a blessed thing indeed. Uh, it's good news um, because the only one who could ever deal with sin has come. Uh, that sin that so easily ensnares us, and let's be honest, it's not a particularly difficult thing to fall into sin, is it? Uh, even over the Christmas period, we get upset. Sometimes as Christians, we talk about the greed that there is in society and uh, how it's all about uh, the things, material things. Well, yeah, that's a problem. We can fall into sin quite easily. But here we celebrate the one who has come to deal with that sin problem. The sin that so easily ensnares us. And he's come just specifically to do that, to destroy sin, Satan and death. He has come to conquer the very things that need conquering in our lives and in the, uh, in the, in the situations in this world. It's the good news that the angels announced to the world. And, and it's good news because it comes to everyone. It goes to the lowliest, those shepherds uh, who really were not uh, particularly viewed as pleasant within society. They were pushed out. Uh, in that sense, uh, um, they were found themselves, uh, uh, because of their job, they found themselves out on the hills. They really were away from everyone. They, they hadn't got much in common with those around them, um, other than that they were uh, seeking to have something of worth in their lives and desiring that God would be a part of it. Um, and so here God speaks not just to those shepherds, but he also speaks to the wisest men of the age, those who had followed the signs, who had uh, seen the star in the sky and had travelled uh, many miles just to find out where this new king would be. This is good news indeed. It's worth celebrating. It's good news that sinners like us who are headed for destruction have a way back to God because of the coming of the Son of God, because of the coming of God in human form. We have much to celebrate because of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now for all the reasons in the world to celebrate, this is the best reason, isn't it? Jesus coming 2,000 odd years ago into our world to rescue you and me from the clutches of the evil one. Um, you know, we feel the weight of our sin, we feel how so easily ensnared by it we are. Uh, and how are we going to be rescued from that? Well, here comes the Lord Jesus Christ to rescue us. Now, we often commemorate the birthdays of famous people, don't we? So uh, we note their impact on the world. About Jesus' birth, we celebrate, and rightly so, because it literally changed the world. God coming in human form, and he gave hope to those who had none. Uh, to those who had uh, no way forward, the Lord Jesus came to bring hope and, um, and a future. Still today, if we pause long enough to think on it, 
Uh, Christmas, it's a day worth celebrating, isn't it? It's a day when we stop and we can remember what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. And I trust that you do that throughout the day. Now, in our world today, when, we, when all we hear, all we ever hear is bad news, it's the best news. And the best news of the angels announced, isn't it? Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. Now, each and every one of us, if we're honest, recognises that we need a saviour. We recognise that our own lives do not come. Uh, well, do not meet God's standard. They do not come anywhere close. And here comes the Lord Jesus Christ to rescue us, to save us, uh, to help us to be right with God. Now, the shepherds who heard that news decided that that news was too good to be ignored. They decided, uh, as they saw the angels uh, in the sky telling them of this wonderful Saviour that had been born, they did not ignore it. They decided that they would go and that they would discover Jesus for themselves. Um, and uh, the question comes really, have we discovered for the Lord Jesus Christ for ourselves? Have we even looked, um, when we're so busy with so many other things, it can be tempting just to put God on the back burner of our lives? Well, the reality is we need to seek out the Lord Jesus Christ in our day. The third thing is there's no joy without accepting the Saviour uh, and Lord, um, accepting him, Jesus Christ, as the Saviour and Lord, we might say. Well, those shepherds that visited Jesus might have found the good news uh, too good an offer to pass by, but the reality is that they did not discover the true joy that Jesus brings until they met him. It wasn't until they actually came and saw what God had promised had arrived. The Messiah had come. There he was, lying in a manger uh, for all the world to see. And these uh, shepherds have come and they've, uh, they've looked at the one who is to be king, the one who is to be the forever king. Now, for many in our world, that reality, uh, the reality of um, the hype uh, or the thing that you're looking to buy does not match the hype. So have you ever been to a market, you know, down to some of the uh, market in Livington or various different places that you might go to a uh, market and watch some of the demonstrations that they do? There's always somebody there, isn't there, selling a product uh, and they do a demonstration to show you how good the product is. You know, it might be car polish or a, a knife sharpeners or, or some other must-have item that they want to display to us. And you watch them do the demonstration and you're taken in, as it were. You are uh, hooked in by what it is that they show you. Uh, and the demonstration works perfectly. The polish uh, is like no other polish you've seen on this earth. And the, the knife, sharp, knife sharpener gets the knife to such a, uh, a sharp edge. And so you buy the product. You buy it because you've seen it demonstrated before your eyes. So surely it must work. And you get home and then you discover, well... Um, you realise that either the product is rubbish or, or that you have to do just as much hard work to get the result from it that you did with whatever else you used before. That's the reality, isn't it? The, the hype rarely matches what it is that's being delivered. Well, not so with Jesus Christ. Um, the hype around Jesus is coming. Uh, the angels declaring his, his arrival. Uh, the miracles that take place as he is there, not to mention the miracle of who he is. Uh, all of these things, they are spectacular, uh, but they, uh, they do not uh, outclass the one that they speak of. Those shepherds, they heard the spectacular message and they went to look and they found Jesus Christ to be more amazing than the message itself. God had not exaggerated, nor had he duped them. They found Jesus to be everything that God had promised. Everything that he had told them was true and comes true in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I can tell you now from personal experience that this is still true. All who seek Jesus find him. All who find him discover him to be what they need. All who repent of their sin and ask for forgiveness receive what he promises. And all who are forgiven receive his spirit, the spirit of the Lord. And all who receive his spirit go on to live lives of worth and receive their joy in Christ. So I said right back at the beginning, there is no joy without Christ. And that is the reality of the world that we live in. Every good gift comes from God. Every good, good gift comes from the Father above. The best gift is the Lord Jesus Christ. And true joy is only to be found in him. So as we celebrate this Christmas period, let's celebrate the fact that he has brought real joy into our hearts and into our lives. 
All because Jesus came to live and to die and to be raised to life so that uh, you can one day reign with him. If you do nothing else today, rejoice in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that he has come, that he might be your constant companion. Remember that he has come, that you might spend eternity with him. Remember that he has come to deal with your sin and to transform your life if only you will let him. Uh, will you seek the Lord Jesus Christ today? Will you seek him as your Lord and Saviour? If you know him already, will you rejoice in him because he has made you right and that you will now spend eternity with him in the new world that he creates? Let's uh, pray and commit our time to the Lord. Loving Father, as we thought about these things, we ask that you would help us in our lives to just to reflect upon how amazing it is that Jesus would come and walk amongst us, that he would go to the cross and pay our sin debt, that he would provide a way for us to be right with our Heavenly Father, and that we might spend an eternity uh, with him. Lord, we praise you for these things. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to grasp them, and we ask, Lord, that you'd help us to enjoy this Christmas period. But with all of the issues that there may be going on in this world, maybe we concentrate our minds on the Lord Jesus Christ, and rejoice at how blessed we truly are. In Jesus' name, amen. So with all that in mind, we're going to sing, Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let me wish you all a uh, happy Christmas. Um, I've done that already once, but we'll do it again. Um, and uh, just to and a happy New Year, because I don't expect I'll see you between now and the New Year. But uh, have a blessed time, uh, and we trust that the Lord will continue to uh, watch over us and protect us in these days. Um, let's pray. Loving Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. We ask that you'd help us to enjoy the rest of this day as we uh, celebrate. Uh, but Lord, we pray as well that you'd continue to help us into the new year. Lord, that you might grant us your peace and that you might grant us that joy in our hearts too. And we ask it for Jesus' sake. Amen.